I have to say that 2021 has been one of the most bizarre years of my adult life with challenges from COVID still. Is it ever going to end? And natural disasters along with logistical challenges and simply finding the time to fit things in. And sadly, the videos have taken a real hit of late, which is a shame because it's something that I really enjoyed doing. But before Christmas sets in, I wanted to give people an update on the Sir Ron build because the most important part of high voltage is inspiring people and showing how creative people can come together the world over and collaborate. Almost all of the development work that you'll see has been conducted via our Discord platform, which if you're interested, there is an open invitation to join. And it really is a hive of activity with different people come together with different skills and expertise and sharing it. And there's nothing elitist about it in the slightest. And people are always posting interesting things, bike builds, ways of doing things. But onto the Sir Ron build. And this bike has been built from the frame up. And it represents things that I've wanted to try with this bike for quite a long time. And I really love my fat bike. So one of the things I wanted to do was to get the biggest, fattest set of tires that I could get and fit them on the Sir Ron. And these are the 2118 wheels from Woody's Wheel Works in the USA. And the tires on them are the Michelin Starcross. And I think they're about the biggest that you can possibly fit on there. And they're not the lightest, but I wanted to give them a go. And I can always change the tires, right? And uh, the brakes, uh, we're going with the, the tried and tested Magura MT5 E-Stop which um, they're not the best, but for the money, they're really, really about the best you can get without spending silly kinds of cash. Um, and then we've got the, the floating point um, rotor on the front and the back is just, uh, just a standard 203 rotor on there. Um, pretty bony guy. So one of the things I definitely wanted was a really nice, big, comfy seat. So this is actually a variation of the stock one that's been redone to include loads and loads of extra padding. And I think I'm gonna be really appreciating that on some of the long range rides, which I am hoping to be doing. In terms of batteries at the moment, um, it's set up with my lithium polymer pack. Um, so that's effectively gonna give not much range, but unlimited power because they've got a really, really high C rating on these packs. The two real areas of kind of innovation on this build though are the way that the controller is mounted and also the, the motor um, in there, which is, which is not stock. But we'll start off with the, with the controller um, that's up here. And this is the, the ASI back 4000. And I'm pretty pleased with it because I, I think this is about the closest that any controller has been mounted on the uh, the Suron maybe maybe the stock is a bit closer but I don't think by much I I think this is almost as close or if not closer than the frame than the new torp one that's come out by the time you put the cover over the top of it it's definitely the closest that, that anyone's got an ASI controller to to go to the frame and it's been done because I've got rid of a lot of the existing sort of mounting brackets that came with the bike and it's going directly onto the subframe. And I've also hinged it at the top here, um, which is to take some of the stress off of the 3D printed brackets, because I think sometimes gradually over time, you're getting some stress cracking in those. So by having a hinge, that's, that's helped a bit with that. And another reason that I can get it that close is because the harness wiring is using um, my own design for the plugs. And you can see a couple here one with the uh, with the phase wiring and the other one doesn't actually have anything in at the moment. But they eject the wires across the face of the back rather than sticking out, which means that I don't have to move this to make room for for that wiring. And they originally designed to help the, the CYC guys, but uh, it's a pain in the ass trying to rewire existing harnesses. But if you're building one from scratch like we are here, then uh, it definitely makes makes sense to do it do it that way. So onto the motor, which is the Lightning Rods Big Block XL motor. And this is an IPM motor, which means that the, the magnets are safely locked away 
within the, the rotor structure. So it's a little bit different to the stock motor, which has surface mounted magnets. And you're probably looking at the, uh, at the mount here and saying that they're in plastic. And you'd be right. The mounts here on the Suron are made in carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate. The original design I did called for these to be in aluminum. And I'm definitely going to be having these machined um, once they've been through, through a bit of testing. Um, but there's an opportunity here to do something, something pretty unique. And high voltage is all about this kind of experimentation. So honestly, like why the hell not? And um, polycarbonate is not just, uh, it's not just any kind of plastic. It has incredible impact resistance and compressive strength. And most of the forces that will be exerted on it are going to be in this nature. Um, the glass point of polycarbonate is 160 degrees centigrade. And that's the point when it will start to soften. So the motor is going to be destroyed long before you know, it, it gets to that point. So I don't really have to worry about the heat. And the way I've done it is I've put various cross bracing um, between the different mounting points. Um, you can see it on, on this one down here. You can see there's three different mounting points there going across. And then there are bolts and rods that run all the way across through the entire structure. And I'm hoping that that's going to prevent any sort of possibility of there being any sort of lateral or, or torsional um, movement on the motor as a result of it, as a, real, as a result of it moving. Um, the filament I'm using has been reinforced further with carbon fiber and that increases its strength. So where I think this design is going to live or die is going to be effectively the, the counter rotation of the motor. So um, I guess if I show, if I show you on this one, so if we pop this sprocket on here, so when the motor turns under load, the sprocket's going to be spinning around like this. Um, but if you were to hold this still tight, the motor would spin the opposite way. So the key is, have I, have I got enough reinforcement with the five bolts here that go all the way through the motor to the other side uh, with the additional M8 points? Uh, there's an M6 point here. Is that enough? um to stop it or will these mounts here like like will the shear force of the counter rotation just slowly shred this thing over time or maybe it'll fail you know pretty damn quick um and i want it to work but i'm like totally prepared 100 percent for it not to work and this is a kind of a spin-off from the main project really um it was supposed to be in aluminum and it still will be but my father-in-law was like well why can't you use 3d printed parts and i didn't really have an answer for him so i thought well you know let's experiment a bit and that's where these these mounts here have come from so i'm going to give it a try and i don't think it's going to fail catastrophically or dangerously so really what have i got to lose apart from maybe a bit of pride and you know a few bucks worth of of plastic um, we're in a nice position um, because we can have these made in aluminum and I'm hopeful that even if this is not a viable design for running power long term, maybe it'll get us a few kilometers so we can check that everything's lining up properly. I'm um, going to show you a clip now of when I had the, the primary reduction hooked on, which I've actually taken off now, um, so you can see how that's going. And from here, what I need to do now is take all of this apart and I'm gonna be doing that this weekend. So everything's coming apart and it's all gonna be put back together with the proper torque specs and it's gonna be greased and made to uh, be secure because if I run it right now, it's probably gonna to fall to pieces within the first kilometer because it's really just to check fit and for show. So that's where we are right now and we're gonna be doing some testing on that with weather allowing because currently it's minus 15 and it's bloody cold and there's no way i'm going out but 
by the time we get through to next week it should warm up a bit and hopefully i'll be able to show you guys some initial test runs with this and see how it's uh how it's performing so if you're interested in this build um subscribe to the channel and you can follow us on discord and you're welcome to join in there so uh thanks for watching the uh, the high voltage channel and we'll see you on the next video cheers